Hey everybody, welcome back to another Blender tutorial where today we're going to be talking about cable physics. That's right, uh, cable physics are useful if you want to connect cables between two telephone poles or you just want to make some string or if you want to incorporate it into your live action footage like I'm going to show you how to do today. So uh, first we're going to be talking about the theory of how this works, how the modifier stack works, the cloth simulation, whatever. Uh, so general setup, and then I'm going to show you an actual use case, the live action footage. So I've put together a little demo. I mean, uh, we can mess around with the settings here, make it like more taut, more loose. We can control all this stuff. Um, and the idea of this is we're going to be using the everything I'm going to teach you to incorporate it to actual empties that are following tracker markers. Okay, uh, so that that's the end goal. But don't like get too excited yet. We got to build up to it. So Cable physics, how do you do it? Well, uh, cable physics is of course gonna be a case, let me go full screen, it's gonna be a case of a normal physics, right? Because we want physics to drive this. We don't wanna animate anything. Uh, so really what we need to do is set this up so that the physics uh, do all the work for us. My chair is squeaky today. Hopefully that's not too annoying. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Um, a cable is essentially a line segment, okay? We don't need any like face geometry or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with a plane, which is exactly the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm saying we don't need faces, but you take this, you go to edge selection mode, so two, you select one edge, doesn't really matter which one, invert the selection, so now I'm selecting the other three edges, X, and then delete those, not faces, but edges, okay? So again, I took a plane and deleted all the other edges so that we only have a single edge left. Um, and this is what we are going to be using for our physics. And if you want to, I don't know if this would work here, but you could set origin to geometry. And there you go, now it's centered there. And we can actually center our line segment, okay? Cool, uh, we have this thing. And just like with any other physics simulation, the more geometry, the more objects, the more whatever we have, uh, the more detailed it's gonna be. So. Now with this line segment, well, uh, subdivide this a couple times, and you're gonna notice that nothing's really happening until you go to vertex mode, and you can see more vertices are being added. So this is just adding like resolution uh, mesh-wise, spatially, uh, to our line segment. The more dots you have, basically, uh, the more detail your rope's gonna be. It's not gonna look uh, fragmented and stuff. Um, so there we have our rope or string or whatever. And now we want to make it uh, interact and do the cloth stuff. So here's how we do it. Uh, the trick is you, are, you want to turn this into a cloth, okay? You can either do that by going to modifiers, going to cloth, or you could just go directly to physics and make this a cloth object. Now I'm going to do it in the modifier sense, even though they're the same thing, uh, because we're going to be dealing with a lot of modifiers here in the future. So I want to, you know, get used to this idea of order and stuff like this hierarchy. And uh, let me, this chair is annoying the fuck out of me. Okay, um, we got the cloth. What's next? Uh, well, if we take this and now play the simulation, you can see our rope falls kind of uniformly, which makes sense if we like rotate it does the same thing, nothing changes. Uh, this makes sense because gravity is being applied to all of it. If we want it to look like a rope, somebody needs to hold those endpoints like a jump rope. So the physics happens in the middle, but not the endpoints. Well, how do we do that? Uh, well, if you go to the physics stuff and you go to the cloth stuff in shape, you're gonna see something called a pin group. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a group, in this case of vertices, that we decide to pin uh, that don't move. Uh, so which ones do we want to not move? Uh, namely the endpoints. This chair is going to be the death of me. Um, okay, so let's pick those vertices. I'm going to select one endpoint, shift click the other endpoint, and then to turn this into a group, because again, it needs to be a pin group, just do control G. That's going to assign to group whatever you have selected. Okay. Um, so now uh, we actually have a vertex group. You could call it like pin or pins or pins and needles, Patreon, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this is going to encapsulate those two things. So if we click uh, select, you see it has those two, okay? Uh, now in the physics, we go back to the shape. We make this our pin group, Patreon pin group. They're kind of like kingpins. Now when we play the simulation, you can see it's actually doing cable-y things. Why? Uh, because we've pinned the two endpoints. Now, of course, it's not going to do anything interesting. There's going to be a bit of bounce in the beginning, but then gravity will still be there and there's no momentum, whatever. Um, I just want to emphasize, at any point we can change our pin group. You could even do this with modifiers, but I'm just gonna add another thing. So I'm gonna assign this vertex to my pin group. And now when we play this, you can see it's caught in the middle as well. So th that's just a thing you could do. Um, so now I, do, I just wanna undo it. Okay, cool. 
So now we have all that. A um, couple things that I want to talk about before we move into the actual case. One, how do we change what goes on in our rope? Well, right now we get a bit of dangling, but what if we wanted to have more or less tension? Well, you go to this vertex mass and you can just increase it. And you can see instantly we get more like bungeeing, longer kind of rope. The reason this happens is now each vertex has this one kilogram weight to it, uh, which means it's going to be super heavy and it's going to have to sag. And that, you know, applies more and more the bigger that number is. By the way, another way to do this, so now I'm bringing it down back to one. Another way to do this is you can actually just go to uh, this geometry and subdivide again, and that will actually add in a lot of geometry. Um, which does a bit, of, a bit of weird stuff in the beginning. But you can see, there's two ways to add mass. One of them is to say each vertex will have more mass, and then the other way is saying have more vertices, because then there's more mass overall. So you want to think about these vertices as like, you know, little weights that we put at the end, or no, all along the rope, okay? Uh, final thing I want to talk about, how do we actually move these endpoints? And here's where it gets a bit glitchy. Um, to move the endpoints, well, we just want to move our pin group. So we want to take this vertex and like move it over here. And you can see this kind of works, but we want to like be able to animate this on the fly. Uh, the easiest way I found is using hooks. Uh, the way this works is you take your vertex, specifically the pin group vertex. We're going to hit control H and that's going to let us hook to a new object, selected object or a bone. Uh, we're going to do a new object because we don't have anything. What this means is add an empty at its location, and this empty is going to represent that uh, vertex location, okay? Um, so now what we could try to do is animate this thing a little. So I'm going to keyframe this thing uh, specifically on the z-axis is what I care about. So this up and down motion, and then we're just going to add in a bit of a procedural jiggle and see if it works. This is where, again, stuff starts breaking and you need to talk about caches and all this. Uh, to have a stable simulation, but whatever. We'll get to it. Uh, so Z location, I'm going to end menu. I'm going to add in a bit of noise, just so it goes up and down a bit chaotically. I want it to do that uh, slowly and with bigger motions. So something like that. Um, so you can see now this vertex is being pulled, but we do have the issue that like nothing else uh, seems to be attached to it. Uh, point is, it's glitchy. It really is glitchy. Oh, you know what it is actually? We need to put the hook above the uh, cloth, I believe. That should help a bit and undo this uh, subdivision thing we did. So now we're going to put this hook above here, and we need to recache this, and I'll explain this in a second. Uh, delete, bake, rebake. There we go. So now you can see that this uh, rope is kind of respecting this, and uh, really the idea here that I pretended to, like, it wasn't an issue. The, the idea here is first we need to have the motion be animated by this hook, and then the cloth is calculated because otherwise it's doing the cloth simulation and then we're just deciding to move this thing up and down, right? So I guess order of operations matters and you just saw that uh, firsthand, okay? Uh, you could also do this with the other like pin group uh, empty on the left and have both of them move like a jump rope, but I think at this point to get the point. So you can change the vertex mass, whatever. Uh, so now what I wanna do is move on to a uh, actual example that's uh, a bit cooler and we'll talk about how to give our cloth a bit of depth. Um, so I believe it is this video. Well, we'll see. Yes, I have uh, two little dots on my fingers. We're going to track them. So you're going to get a mini tracking tutorial, and then we're going to attach things onto them and actually give this cable thickness. Okay, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the movie clip editor. Why? Because this is where we do our tracking. Just drag that in here. And you can do this with any two or three or however many points uh, you want. Um, for the um, tracking, what I recommend is in the render tab, change the color management to standard. So our footage looks normal. It doesn't do that filmic application. It doesn't actually change anything about tracking. It just looks the way it's supposed to. So that's for me. In the output tab, I'm also gonna match the frame rate. In this case, you can see it's 30. Where is it? Doesn't actually say anymore. Well, usually it says the uh, frame rate here. Um, oh, there we go, 30 frames per second. And now it's there. Um, for the footage, I only want uh, the part of the footage where my fingers are already up. So starting on like frame 40, we're gonna start tracking there and then we can you know, play through this. Actually, let's load this into memory. You can do that by hitting prefetch and uh, it tends to be a bit slower than an image sequence, but now you can see it's all uh, in here. So that's that purple line. Um, I'm gonna keep going until my fingers go off screen. So a bit before that. So something like two 35 or something, okay? So this is our work area. Uh, for tracking these, it should be super simple. Uh, we're gonna use a tracker. I'm gonna enable normalize. So these are all the settings for the tracker I'm about to add. 
Uh, normalize just makes it a bit more invariant to lighting conditions. So if a shadow happens to pass over, it's not the biggest deal in the world, or if the light kind of changes as I move my finger up and down, should matter less. Um, additionally, you could go to tracking settings here, somewhere, no, it's here. Uh, you wanna go to match and change this from keyframe to previous frame. What this means is instead of like looking at this tracker, so control click to add a tracker, instead of just looking at the frame where I added it on and try added it on and trying to match this pattern through all uh, future frames, alt S uh, to do the search area, it's gonna update every single frame. So what it's looking for is gonna update uh, for every frame. So it's gonna look at the previous frame instead of just frame number one. Hopefully that made sense. Either way, add the tracker. Let's track forwards like this and hopefully it makes it all the way through. It does. Um, we could try, I'm just gonna, I just, out of curiosity, I wanna know what happens if we don't do previous frame. It might not matter in this case, but in general, it does help with situations like this. So now we have a, a keyframe type tracker, track it, seems to work as well. I would imagine that uh, with the other finger might be an issue, but let's find out. Tracker, control T, and you can see it lost it. And that might not be because of the previous frame thing, but just the search area. Either way, I am gonna be using previous frame, so. Add a tracker, increase the search area, because our finger moves up and down. You know, my finger, it's not our finger. You don't own it. Um, goes up and down pretty chaotically. Track it forwards. Nope. <laughs> that is the issue with previous frame. If it uh, latches onto something incorrect, I guess it will uh, continue to think that that is true. Either way, we can always crack this. I'm gonna delete everything uh, past that point. Let's go up uh, one frame which seems to be a repeated frame, up another. So I'm just gonna help it a bit uh, with this area. We could track frame by frame, just to make sure that it's good to go. Okay, and at this point I'm confident that it might work, so let's track forwards. Nope. <laughs> the, the troubles of tracking continue. So just go to the last frame where it's working. So here, delete the future, forward a frame. I wonder why it's messing up so bad. No idea. Let's try, uh, you can always switch between these. So these are the tracking settings for your active tracker. We can always switch uh, forwards and backwards. So let's track a couple frames and it's lost it right there. Adjust it and control T. Okay, so that seems to be pretty good. Uh, just make sure that your tracker is uh, good to go. Yeah, it's following the finger. And by the way, when I'm done with a tracker, I lock it uh, with control L. So that's locking a tracker. Okay, uh, we have our two trackers and we want to import this information into the 3D viewport so we can do the rope uh, physics and stuff like this. Uh, so the way we do this is we select both trackers, reconstruction, link empty to track. What this is gonna do is it's gonna add in two empties. They're called track one and O1. I think they're led by constraints, um, but if we go to the 3D viewport, you can see we have two empties. Let's get rid of this. Two empties that follow the motion, and more importantly, they're stuck to the camera. And you might be thinking, okay, well, if they're stuck to the camera, you could put these empties anywhere, it doesn't really matter, because if you look at the camera view, and you actually enable the footage, add image, movie clip, the active clip, you can see no matter where we move the camera, uh, those empties are stuck onto there. Uh, but, but, and this is a important uh, thing, because we're doing like physics and rope physics and stuff like this, the direction of gravity matters. The direction of gravity, in this case, is going to be down. So we want those empties, since my fingers were like parallel or perpendicular to the floor, uh, we wanna make sure that that's represented here. So what I mean is I'm gonna take my camera, position it in the middle, rotation, shift it, and like rotate it like this, so that both of these empties are kind of facing up and gravity is going down. So I want this rope to be in between these two, right? Uh, but gravity still, you know, affecting down. If I rotated it, it'd be doing some weird stuff, okay? So orientation matters, okay? Uh, now that we have our track and you can see that it's working here, uh, let's save, that's probably what we should do. I'm gonna call this something creative. <laughs> um, so now that we, we've set it up, let's set up our rope physics. And this is gonna be a bit extra compared to what we did last time, but pretty similar. So uh, just like last time, what we need is a edge segment. So I'm gonna make a plane, just select one of these edges, invert and delete the other edges, okay? So now we have a single edge and let's actually center that, okay? Uh, but now, um, unlike before where we kind of set this up and then create hooks for our uh, endpoints, uh, now we already have our hooks and we somehow need to kind of fit this rope to it. Well. Uh, to start off, I want this rope to be positioned, so it's like right in between the empties, right? 
Uh, to do this, uh, easiest way, snapping, vertex snapping, and this makes it so that, let's go to the camera view, it makes it so that when we select a vertex like this one, we can move it, and when it gets near the empty, it snaps to it. Vertex snapping, and now you can see it's exactly in between those two, so snapping, okay? Um, and they match on frame 40, which in our case is frame one, and then they no longer are attached, okay? Uh, so let's fix that. Um, I guess we need to resync these. Snap, snap, there we go, okay? Uh, to connect these, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a vertex. To select the empty, since we wanna hook it to a selected object, uh, you wanna control click, and sometimes this is a bit hard, but you control click, control H to hook, and now we're gonna hook this uh, vertex that we're talking about to a selected object, okay? And this, this endpoint as well, control click, control H, selected object. So now in our modifier stack, you can see we have two hooks, one of them for one endpoint, one for another. So you can see if we actually look at this, um, it should now be going exactly in between our two empties, okay? Um, so now really our only objective is to add the physics in between and uh, it will naturally look uh, correct with the bunginess and whatever because the stretching and all this is exactly dependent on the motion of our footage, okay? Uh, cool, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, I'm now going to subdivide this to add in more geometry that we can actually simulate with. The more geometry, uh, the harder the calculation, but cloth uh, tends to be pretty fast. Again, um, if we were to now apply cloth, um, it would not really react the way we want it to. Like it's caught between like this thing and gravity and all this, we don't want it. Uh, so what we need to do is add in our pin group. So I'm just gonna select this. I'm going to select this. So again, same ideas from before. Control G to assign it to a group. We could call it whatever we want, like pins. And then in the uh, shape data of our uh, thing, which uh, I think uh, sometimes appears and disappears because of gravity. Uh, but because of this, what you want to, or rather, what you want to do is you want to go to this, you want to go to shape, make this our pin group, and now it will update. So if you get this weird like updating thing where it like refreshes and then it's working, just know that, that this is for now expected behavior. Uh, but just like last time, we can change a whole bunch of stuff with this, right? So at this point we can make this heavier rope so it's uh, less taut um, and all, all this stuff. So let's see it from the camera view. So this is more of a bungee e rope and you can see that whenever this uh, resets, so just now it does get a bit crazy. So what I would recommend is going uh, tracking a few frames before your intended start point, so you're thinking stabilize, but whatever. There might be a way to stabilize this from the simulation, but uh, we can make it even heavier, so there's a lot of like extra slack, or we can make it very taut, and this will make it look very tight once it like refreshes. Yeah, so you, you, you can mess with this. By the way, also some of these settings I believe matter, like your tension, compression, whatever, uh, but at this point I'm happy with my rope physics. So again, we have our hooks and then the cloth, the mistake I made before, right? We first wanna modify the position and then do the cloth. Finally, to give this thing some thickness, uh, the trick I've seen in other tutorials is you use a skin modifier. And then what you do with this, and this is used for like, like you know, armatures and stuff like this. Uh, but if you take this and then select all your vertices, so I hit A. Wow, I, I'm sorry, somebody's showering downstairs and this thing's clicking. I'll wrap up soon. Uh, you select all of these, you control A, and then bring it down, that's going to scale down like the effect of this uh, skin modifier. Again, skin modifier comes after the cloth. So we simulate and then we give this thing a bit of thickness. Uh, but the nice thing about this is now if we actually look at the viewport, this is something that actually has thickness uh, that we could render, etc. So that is the basics of the rope physics. I mean, the rest of it is kind of tailoring it to your project and stuff like this. And I think uh, we've uh, successfully uh, done that exploration. So. 20 minute tutorial, not too bad. Anyways, uh, what's all this stuff on the right? Is it a list of vertices along the rope of the cloths? No, it's a list of 700 plus some patrons uh, that get access to a bunch of stuff. For one, they get early access to tutorials, so some patrons have seen this way earlier than you have, possibly days earlier. Additionally, they get access to exclusive tutorials. I post those a couple times a month. Those are for neither CG Matter or Default Cube uh, channels but only for patrons. Additionally, Discord access, blend files, all this stuff. Get it over on Patreon, how? There's a link in the description, okay? So if you're interested, check it out. If you're not, don't. Uh, but 
It is a cool uh, way to keep both these channels running, just a thought. Anyways, uh, hopefully you learned something about cable physics and uh, an application of it. Sorry that it got a bit jumbled, jumbled in the middle there, but what can you do? Anyways, I've been CG Matter, you've been you. Buh. 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 Buh.